Hi, this is Todd from Hot Packs. I want to talk to you today about cell selection. So if, if you're getting ready to do a battery build and you're trying to select what cells you want to put in that pack, that's what we're going to talk about today. A couple of options are available on the market. Um, this one here, this is a Model 3 NCR 21700. So the NCR is the chemistry. This is 21 millimeters in diameter by 70 in length. It has a, a rated capacity of 4.8 amp hours or, or 4,800 milliamp hours. Um, and this one has a continuous discharge rating of 13.8 amps. We have this one here. This is um, a cell by BTW. Uh, this is their 40 EC model. It, it has a capacity of 4 amp hours and a continuous discharge current of 12 amps. This one here is a, a cell by the same manufacturer. Um, this is the, the 40 PC. So this again has four amp hours capacity and a uh, maximum continuous discharge uh, rating of 20 amps per cell. Next one here is the uh, Lishin. This is the SA model cell. This is um, a four amp hour cell, again with a 12 amp continuous current rating. Next one we have here is the Samsung. This is the Samsung, yeah, the 50E, and this is a 5 amp hour cell, so it has a little more capacity. Uh, this one is rated at 9.8 amps. Based on my testing, I think this one can probably do more than that safely. This one here is, uh, again, another Samsung cell. This is the 40T. Um, this is a 4 amp hour cell rated at 45 amps continuous discharge current. And then the last cell here, um, this is the Molly Cell P42A, 4.2 amp hours, 45 amp continuous current discharge. All right, um, so we've got some uh, different equipment we'll be using to do this. So this right here is a, a meter, the YR1035. Uh, internal resistance measurement will be done with this meter. Uh, this meter uses uh, 1000 Hertz. AC current to check internal resistance. Um, yeah, so a typical multimeter wouldn't be good for measuring internal resistance of these cells because the, the values are so small. So we have a specialized meter for that. Cell temperature will be measured with this uh, thermocouple meter. Uh, just a note, if you um, use one of these, uh, you can verify the accuracy of the thermocouple by uh, placing it in boiling water. It should read 100 C. And if you place it in ice water, it should read 0 C. I've checked this one. It's within 0.1 degrees. Um, so it's, it's accurate. Um, and then for discharge testing, we'll be using the ZKE uh, EBCA20. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, take the measurements. Here's uh, here's the uh, fixture that we'll be using for discharge. So it has independent leads for voltage. Uh, and current for improved accuracy. And I'm gonna go ahead and take the data and then we'll come back and, and review it. All right, so here we go. We have the data. What I did was I collected temperatures every 30 seconds for all seven of these cells. Um, it's, it's fair to note that the start temperature uh, over here on the left-hand side was not the same uh, for every cell. It was within a few degrees uh, C. And so what I've done here uh, for purposes of comparison is I've aligned them all or, or basically offset the curves um, so that they all start at the same 23C temperature. Um, and, and that's the, uh, the, the y-axis over here is, is degrees Celsius. Over here is um, minutes at 12 amps constant current discharge. Um, so the, the heat generation in the cell uh, should follow the uh, rate of discharge current. So in other words, if I... Uh, double the discharge current, I would expect the, the temperature rise um, to double as well or, or climb significantly, right? It's, um, it's closely tied to the, the rate of discharge. Um, so the, <clears throat> the internal resistances were checked here at uh, 1,000 hertz AC um, and noted next to the curve. So uh, the, the cell with the highest surface temperature was the Model 3 cell also uh, has the highest internal resistance at 22.1 milliohms. Um, followed next by uh, the Lishin SA cell, 15.6 mil ohms. Um, and then the uh, BTW 40EC, uh, this cell competes with the Lishin SA. It has slightly lower resistance 
and slightly lower uh, surface temperature. Then we have the, the 50E. Now, if we look at the 50E cell, it finished at almost 60 degrees C. Um, however, it's a five amp hour cell, so it delivered more energy. It's gonna have higher temperature. If I were to compare it uh, with the Delicious SA or the 40EC by BTW, I would compare it at the four amp hour mark, or in this case, 20 minutes, um, at a similar discharge time. Um, to be fair to the cell. And then the uh, the 40PC, or actually rather the Samsung 40T um, finished uh, at the next highest temperature. That was 11.4 milliohm. Um, again here, the, the 40PC finished at a little higher temperature, but if I were to take it at the same uh, energy discharge as the 40T, it's it's a little bit lower. And then um, and then we have the, the Molly Cell P42A, right? This is the premium cell. It's the most expensive of the group. It has the lowest internal resistance um, at 9.5 milliohms and, uh, and finish with the lowest surface temperature. Um, <clears throat> important point to note. So here's a picture of the fixture that was used. Here's the, um, the thermal couple attached. And uh, the conditions for cooling in this fixture are, um, are quite good, right? It's open to atmosphere. Um, the heat can dissipate uh, much more effectively than it would if, if uh, there were cells tightly arrayed all around it. You can imagine cells packed in all around it um, with, with a, a wrap, um, a shrink wrap around the pack. Um, it, it's going to build up more heat. And so um, I, I've taken measurements of the at the center of the pack as it's assembled um, f through the BMS. And, and that's where this 30 C value came from. So uh, the temperatures I saw in the center of the pack were uh, 30 degrees C, about 30 degrees C higher than the, the surface temperature of one cell when tested in a fixture like this. So, you know, if you're looking at the, uh, the Model 3 cell and you say, okay, well, um, you know, we're somewhere around 68 um, degrees C, the limit up here is at 80 C and uh, you, you think the cell's okay. Well, it's actually not. Um, because when you when you get them in a pack and they're all working together to generate heat, um, it's going to hit its temp limit before you exhaust the capacity of the cell. And so if you're uh, on an e-bike and let's say you, you could pull constant current from it the whole time um, on a long ride, then what would happen is, uh, you know, your bike would shut off and you'd be waiting for the, the BMS to get below its um, temperature threshold so that you could start uh, discharging the pack again. Um, <clears throat> the second point that I noted here was that, um, uh, you know, this is a constant current, 12 amp constant current discharge test on an e-bike. You don't see a hundred percent duty cycle like that. Um, you know, usually you're on the throttle and off the throttle. And so rather than completely discharge the pack over a, a time of 20 minutes, uh, you discharge the pack over 40 minutes or an hour. And um, and because it has more time, that's more time for the heat to get out of the pack. So the, the pack temperatures wouldn't be as high. And then um, another point to note here, which is intuitive, is that if, if you have the battery in an uh, enclosed compartment uh, where there's no airflow, obviously it's gonna be hotter than um, if you have uh, the plastic off the bike and, and the, the batteries out in the wind cooling. Um, that's a, a more favorable situation. So <clears throat> the next uh, chart that I looked at here, this is uh, discharge curves. And so uh, this is voltage as you're discharging the battery pack. So starting at um, a, a fresh battery at, at zero amp hours, um, we have the, the nominal, um, not the nominal, but the fully charged cell voltage at 4.2. And then as we uh, continue to discharge um, the pack here, voltage falls off until it hits its its minimum um, that's rated for the cell. So for a number of these cells, that was two and a half volts. And uh, for a few of these cells being the Delicious SA and the BTW cells, the 40EC and the 40PC, those were at 2.75. So that's why uh, you see these curves stop at 2.75 volts rather than coming all the way down to two and a half like the rest. Um, <clears throat> in general, looking at these curves, the further to the right is better and the higher up is better. Uh, so the further to the right means that they have more um, capacity, more runtime. So in this case, the uh, the Samsung 50E has a five amp hour rated capacity. Now that capacity, if you look at the cell specifications, is gonna be a 0.2C. And what that means is um, if the capacity is five amp hours, 0.2 times that is one amp. So at a one amp um, constant current discharge, it should be able to hit five amp hours. Here we're running 12 amps. 
uh, the, the more drain you put on the battery, the, the less capacity it's gonna have. So this one didn't make rate, but we can't say that it didn't meet its specification. Um, <clears throat> Other than that, uh, the higher the curve is better because that means it delivered more voltage during its discharge and more voltage means more torque at the rear wheel. Um, so the the cell that performed best at that um, is really the Molly cell, right? The one with the lowest resistance. So that kind of makes sense. Um, and then the rest are, they fall in pretty close. Um, not so different. Um, the other thing to note here is, is we can see that the um, the fully charged state or the, the open circuit voltage is 4.2, but then these curves really start plotting points much lower. And, and that region of the curve is um, what I'm going to refer to as the, the sag area. And that's where um, we instantly apply the, the constant current uh, discharge and we see the voltage drop. So the next chart is going to be a zoom in of that region of the curve. So here's a look at the, the chart for SAG. And um, yeah, it would have been good, I guess, to put the uh, the resistance values on here. So what I expected was the um, the cell with the least amount of resistance to have the best SAG and the, the cell with the most amount of resistance to have the uh, the worst SAG. And uh, they, they did follow somewhat, but not exactly. So that, that's interesting to me. Um, so the Molly cell, P42A, had the, the least amount of sag at 5.5%. And the way I'm defining the percent sag is I'm, I'm looking at the, uh, the voltage at one second. So this is the volts over here, the voltage at one second, minus the voltage at, at open circuit at zero seconds. And then I'm taking one minus that. So um, kind of like voltage loss as a percentage of the... Uh, the open circuit voltage. Um, and what we see then is that the, the Molly cell did the best and the uh, BTW 40 PC cell did the worst at 9.8%. Uh, but what I want to talk about was the, the delta between the two. So if we take the best cell and the worst cell, the difference in sag is 4.3%. So um, if my voltage were higher by 4.3%, uh, and let's talk about a, a fixed uh, resistance motor, then the, um, the current flow on a fixed resistance would be higher by 4.3%. And motor torque being proportional to current would also be 4.3% higher. So um, the difference between the best cell and the worst cell would be 4.3% more torque at the rear wheel. Um, so, so maybe you'll notice 4.3%, but maybe you won't. Um, but I can tell you that the difference in price between these cells is, is close to about double between the uh, the most expensive and the least expensive cell. Um, so I, I don't know. I mean, is it worth it? Maybe. You know, if your battery compartment has space, you could say, well, maybe it makes sense to put twice as many cells in if they cost half as much. And then the current flow per cell would be half. The heat generation would be half. And um, the sag would be half. Um, and, and so, you know, if, if we go back and we look at, um, we look at this, this plot here. So we see that the, uh, the model three cells, 22.1 mil ohms. Um, now that the particular pack I'm building, uh, doesn't have space there. There isn't battery compartment for, uh, more than five or six cells in parallel. Um, so I, I wouldn't choose that battery, even though it's rated at 13.8 amps continuous uh, discharge, I wouldn't choose that cell for this pack because at 12 amps per cell, it's it's gonna hit its temperature limit before um, the pack is fully discharged. Um, but if but if you're building a pack, say, um, so I know an application, um, and if I share the application with you, you'd recognize it, a reputable battery supplier. They're working with these Model 3 cells because they're inexpensive and they're using 11 of them in parallel and the current dropper cell is like less than five amps. So um, the heat generation isn't a problem because the current draws low. The sag, it wouldn't be a problem because the current draws low. And uh, the runtime is great because they have um, more capacity with more cells in parallel. So there are applications for those cells. It just, um, it really matters how many of them you're gonna be using and uh, what the current draw is. Um, 
So that's that's really the the gist of it. Um, so for me, looking at these, uh, I would take out this cell here because it's going to um, overheat the pack. And then out of these cells, I would pick the one that's most cost effective for the application. Um, so there it is, cell selection. Thanks for watching.